Hello, my fabulous seekers. How is everyone doing? I was getting ready to record an older Daryl Brooks video. Like I've been continuing on. The next thing is that he will be giving his ridiculously pretend emotional closing argument. But then I was kind of coming across law and crime last night. And guess what? It looks like he's back in court. I came across this about a 20 minute clip. It looks like probably it's a hearing for a trial that's going to begin on Monday. I don't know if they'll record it or not, but I'll kind of keep my eyes open and share it with you if I find anything. But I am assuming that it has something to do with his deal with Erica running over her. And so we do get to see him. He has a little different look. And what's funny is the title of it, it says, um, Daryl Brooks gets wheeled into court ahead of trial. So apparently he's still being an ass. So he is there via wheelchair, but he's there in court. So let's take a look at it. Matthew Tarbinson and Shelly Grosso appear for the state. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Attorney Russell Jones, on behalf of Mr. Brooks, Mr. Brooks appears in person. I appear via Zoom. Good afternoon, Judge. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, when Mr. Brooks first got here, uh, my deputies alerted us to the fact that he wanted to speak with Mr. Jones. Uh, given the fact that Mr. Jones is via Zoom and Mr. Brooks is here in person, the way we accommodated that was everyone left the courtroom, uh, including the spectators in the gallery, the person who is here filming, for the media and uh, obviously all the parties and my staff, except for the deputies. For security reasons, of course, they had to stay with Mr. Brooks. Uh, so I allowed them to have a conversation. I wasn't paying attention to how much time it was. It might have been, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I allowed Mr. Brooks to have that conversation with Mr. Jones. Uh, and then after Mr. Mr. Jones uh, alerted the lawyers, I think, and my deputies alerted us, we all came back in. Is that correct, Mr. Jones? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So we are here for, it was supposed to be a motion hearing and a final pretrial uh, on these matters. They are set for trial on Monday, May 6th. So that's just a couple days from now. Um, at our last date on January 18th, uh, the state indicated they thought they would be filing an amended information and an other acts motion. The defense also thought they may have been filing some motions. So we set this for about 90 minutes. I set deadlines for that, that all motions were to be filed by March 22nd and uh, 419, April 19th for the responses. I will note that nothing has been filed from either side as far as any substantive motions. Motions in limine uh, were filed, uh, I just believe, by the defense, uh, and they appear to be standard. Um, so there is nothing to proceed on as far as any substantive motions. Um, do we remain in a trial posture, Mr. Jones? We do, Judge. And with respect to the motion filings, um, we were anticipating potentially the state filing, and it would have been a response to other acts. Presumably, they're not seeking that simply and file that. So that's why we have nothing else to file other than our standard motions. Okay. Uh, and nothing from the state? Correct. I anticipate filing another acts motion. I thought about it. The prejudice hurdle would be extraordinarily high in this particular case. And when I gave it more thought, the state didn't anticipate using that other acts because of the prejudicial nature of those other acts, unless there was a defense that triggered the, the high amount of um, relevancy to those other acts. And I think that would just as likely happen if the door is potentially opened by one of those defenses being argued in this particular trial. And so rather than file the motion, if the defense becomes that this is an accident or some sort, then I may raise the issue at that point. So, but I'm, I'm not, I did not file another acts motion. That's correct. Okay. All right. So we'll deal with those issues if they arise during trial, maybe they won't. Um, so 
obviously we have some special issues associated with this case. Um, Mr. Jury selection is going to be our biggest hurdle. Um, what I, I have thought um, just on my own, and I don't know if the parties have thought about this, um, I don't know if anybody would think that a court trial would be a preferable way to go to avoid any of those potential issues that would arise with having a jury and trying to seat a jury with a case that um, has not, this case is not notorious, but certainly Mr. Brooks's other case is notorious. Um, and we certainly will do our best to, to seat a fair and impartial jury. Um, but that's just, that's just off the top of my head. I think that might be the best way, but of course, Mr. Brooks, that, that is ultimately his decision on whether it would be a court trial or a jury trial. Um, so I just throw that out there. Nobody's requested that at this point. There has been a request for a jury trial, so we will plan on that, but it is just some food for thought um, that it may be a way to allow for um, evidence to be presented without the potential tangential issues that would arise with a jury. So that's just something to think about. Now, you know, of course, Daryl is going to want a jury. Maybe you'll get a chance to try to tell them again what they need to know. But let's face it, also, it'll just give him more time in the courtroom to perhaps he'll have a, a moment or two. But what else is he going to do for a thousand years? So this is kind of like an outing, you know. It'd be like me taking my kids on a field trip to, to Legoland or, or to the museum. This is like a, you know, a social outing for him. So, of course, he's going to want the jury. Good gosh. Um, in addition to that, if I'm going to go with the on the assumption at this point that we are having a jury trial. I have not prepared any written information. I will prepare that over the weekend and uh, give it to the parties and we can certainly talk about it. But I think we have to address it. Um, no one is going to pretend that we're going to introduce Mr. Brooks and no one's going to know who he is. Um, so obviously he it's not going it. to be, you know, one of the qu standard questions I asked during voir dire is, you know, has anyone heard anything about this case or about this defendant or had any opinion as to anything. Um, Only everyone. That may foreclose us from seating any of the people that we bring in for voir dire uh, right off the bat um, because it was a big deal. The Waukesha case was a big deal. So I will prepare something. Do the parties have thoughts or do you want to prepare something as well and we can kind of put something together as far as uh, a preliminary statement to the jurors. I mean, obviously. Do you think that manila folder in front of him is a ICF form? Idiot complaint form? Complaint form? Oh my goodness. Advising them that this needs to be, you will only judge this case on this evidence and, you know, asking those questions if they can be fair and impartial and put out of their minds anything that they may know about Mr. Brooks. Um, each side can submit something if they would like. I, I, I'm kicking myself that I didn't think to tell everybody to do this ahead of t today's date so we could have worked it out um, this afternoon rather than doing it on Monday, but that was my error. I probably should have thought of that. I did not. Um, so if the parties want to do that, they can do that. I will have some language that I work up as well um, to address that. Um, other than that, I... I just talked with a sergeant from the sheriff's department. In the past, Mr. Brooks has been transported directly here and not really held in the jail, even at, in, as a waiting position until he's brought directly to court. And then generally he's whisked away. Um, I don't know what their plan is. I've, I've got some concerns that if we're gonna be in trial, I don't know what the situation would be in the jail, but I have alerted um, a sergeant in the sheriff's department to my concerns to make sure that Mr. Brooks is going to be here every morning for trial, that we're gonna, not going to end up with him being housed somewhere else. 
Um, but I don't know that, that that's not something that I get involved in generally. I did just want to put it on someone's radar to make sure that we have no delays when it comes to that. Um, is there anything that, I think your motions in limine were pretty standard, Mr. Jones. So you, you, you've both tried many cases in front of me. Everybody knows generally how I run things and how things work. Um, so I think they're standard motions in limine. So they were along with the rules of how I do things. Um, does the state have anything they want to specifically address on the record this afternoon? I, Your Honor, the only thing that I want to address is I do anticipate filing an amended information. I have um, for a long time been very clear that if this proceeded to trial that I would file charges of intimidation based on the calls that were made on particular days. And so I anticipate having a total of six um, charges for intimidation of a victim in the amended information. Um, I will get that filed as soon as possible, um, but I have explained that both to Attorney Jones. I've explained that to previous counsel numerous times in communications on this case. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. I think we, on the charge in the underlying domestic violence case, we are going to be proceeding on amended charge of first degree recklessly endangering safety rather than second degree rest, recklessly endangering safety. So we will have those charges amended. And if the court wishes, I can prepare the jury instructions over the weekend. If that helps with regards to the charges. Okay. And then my only other question is, would the court prefer having a information with both cases joined in a single information or having two informations with two cases? But I can prepare it either way. That is a CCAP protect issue that is above my pay grade. Okay. Um, I think they probably need to be filed in each case. I'm hearing, I'm looking at my clerk, the back of my clerk's head and she's indicating, yes, that would be better. So separate okay. for the separate cases. Uh, Jones, do you want to be heard as to what Mr. Chorbitson's statements or sure. your own issues? So I, let me respond to Mr. Chorbitson first that I have a few things I'd like to address. Mr. Chorbitson indicated if it does not resolve with a plea, he would file an amended information and bring all the charges he thinks that he can prove. And uh, that's not news to me and it's not news to prior counsel. Um, I have requested for Mr. Chorbitson I don't, I, I know I have it in writing somewhere, but I've made a request of him to put his offer in writing because Mr. Brooks wants it in writing in an email. So I, you could just send it to me one today with that discussion. Uh, Mr. Of course, Mr. Brooks wants it in writing because he wants all of his paperwork, the originals and time stamped. And he wants, probably he's going to want oath of office and all that wonderful stuff. Oh my goodness. Mr. Brooks had some issues with potential discovery at Bostonville. I'm going to provide him written uh, or all paper discovery that I physically can get my hands on and give it to him also Monday, even though we sent it to him back in March. And I'm not saying that Mr. Brooks is wrong. I'm sure the institution may have lost it, but we can deal with that. I hmm. have it all. I oh, lost it. Come on now. Lost it. I accept the value. Blah, blah, blah. And then he never has his paperwork. That's just, he's probably still stalling. Good gosh. Okay, I'm going to try to shut up since this isn't a very long clip. The one request, I only have two requests. Number one, I think given the nature of this and the panel and the background, it would make sense if we started maybe at 9 o'clock. I have two quick appearances at 8.15 and 8.30 that I'd like to clear off. If we come in at 9, obviously I think if the three of us get together and decide how to deal with a joint statement, and I would prefer it to be issued by the court rather than the state or me. Um, I think we could accomplish that in probably about a half an hour's time. The other thing I'm going to make this request, and I don't know how much the court has the authority to do this other than that you can make a request to the jail, but your request would probably be uh, received better than mine, even though I've made uh, inquiries. I know, or at least I've learned now, Mr. Brooks might be moving back and forth to the institution. I understand we can't control that. If at the end of every day of trial, I can have a deputy keep him in the bullpen for some period of time, a half an hour, so I can at least meet with him in the bullpen, or if we can break at 4.30, so we can have someone until 5 o'clock, so I can have some time with Mr. Brooks uh, after each day of trial. Um, it may not be needed. I might say, hey, today that we don't need it, but I'd like that little bit of cushion because he's going to be physically removed and I won't have the opportunity to do that. So maybe we break a little bit earlier than we normally would so I could have that on days I might need it. Just sort of thinking ahead. 
Sure, I think we can accomplish that. And just FYI, I'm just letting you know that his attorney is not coming across very well, and that's there's nothing I can do about that, but I think we can get the gist of it. But yeah, he is, they kind of have this blurry noise, blaring noise, but I can't really do anything about that. Just FYI. You know, so I want to test the machines for Mr. Brooks, obviously, as possible, but I understand I'm down by the executive first, like that you have the executive branch in their uh, wings. Judge, so it's probably too late for this as well, but I'm just taking in the size of your courtroom physically, and I'm wondering if there's any chance we could switch courtrooms just for jury selection, even. Because um, I imagine we're going to have a rather large panel for jury selection. What I anticipated doing, and I, I think it probably is too late to plan a switch now. Um, what I would anticipate is I can get 35 in. It's tight, but we can do it. So we'll have th we can have 35 people in here. Um, and then if we are able to, let's say, see eight out of the 35, we will put them back in our jury room and bring a fresh panel of 35 over and do it in that way. I think I don't have any idea how long this is going to take, given, as I said, the notoriousness of the Waukesha case. Mm -hmm. So um, Daryl hopes forever. I, I wouldn't want to guess that one of the bigger courtrooms is going to accommodate it and still doesn't um, and have everybody move for those purposes. So I think we just kind of get as many as we can and then start with a new group. So it may take longer than usual. So we may do a couple um, process of picking a jury um, in, in piecemeal fashion. Um, but we should be able to accomplish it in that way. I think if we do run into issues, that may be the best way. So what I'm hearing from everybody is Mr. Torbenson has offered to put together the jury instructions. Uh, I appreciate that. And we will all work on what our idea of a statement looks like as far as what to tell the jury about this case and that it is only this case they are to determine. Um, not anything else they may have know or heard or think or believe they know or any judgments they've made. It's not going to be a general run of the mill, you know, I assume you haven't heard anything about this. You haven't? Yeah. So we will take it, uh, take it from there. So everybody's going to bring that statement and Mr. Torbenson is going to do the jury instructions. Is there Thank anything you. more for sure. defense? Yeah, yes. uh, I have a scheduled meeting with Mr. Brooks tomorrow at 2.30. Apparently that's not going to occur because he won't go to jail. I'm efforting to get a meeting with him at his institution. When we, uh, I don't know that down. for sure. Well, Mr. Brooks is fairly confident of that. Either way, I've got the one set up at the jail. I'm going to try and set up the one at the institution, and hopefully, you know, one of them occurs. Okay. Um, and if he can be brought over at 8 a.m., even, I will try and get down there. I mean, I'm just saying, once he's in your bullpen, I think that's, you know, a place that makes it easier for me to get to him. Uh, but we'll stay in communication and do what we can, I guess. Okay. All right. Anything further from the state? The only thing I want to add is that uh, I... Uh-oh. Looks like, looks like there's a little bit of technical difficulty. Also, it looks like it's being like recorded through glass because you see all the different reflections and stuff. I'm not sure what's going on there, but oh well. So tell me what you think about how you think Daryl looks. while we're waiting for this to get fixed. We get to them, uh, but we'll stay in communication and do what we can, I guess. Okay, all right. Anything further from the state? The only thing I wanna add is that uh, I did tell uh, the court and counsel in chambers, I have a homicide case. What's he laughing at? Uh-oh. Microphone? The internet. I can't hear. What? The internet? Oh, okay. So it's all, it's just, 
the internet's down. <laughs> What's so funny, Daryl? So it says an unknown error, so now it's letting me start again. Let's see if rest pops up. It sure is nice not to hear him speak. In case the record speak. is clear, we lost Mr. Jones via Zoom. Sometimes he's in the waiting room. Well, we're still connecting. Hi, you're back. I can see you. Yes. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh. Thank oh, you. my God. He, he spoke. I automatically ended up muted, but Mr. Brooks pointed out to me that I could unmute. So now we can Oh, fine it. moment. Yeah. Well, of course he pointed out mute. If anybody knows about the mute button, that would be Daryl. Oh, he got to speak. Bless his heart. Um, We're back. All right. So, uh... The last thing I heard was Mr. Tomlinson saying he has a homicide trial, has an emergency stay, and then he froze. Right. I, th I think it's unlikely for the stay to be lifted, and this should be the case that can go on Monday. Okay. All right. Um, all right, then I think we just stand ready to go on Monday. Uh okay, so what I was going to say is, well... It looks like the trial will begin Monday. I don't know if they'll be showing it live or anything like that, but if so, I will share it with you. I thought y'all might be interested in seeing this little bit. Not anything very exciting, but still we got to get to look at him, to hear him. And he's still in a wheelchair. That means he's probably still combative. Okay, guys. I will be sharing more, of course, of everything. I love you. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, commenting, and I'll see you the next time.